as Brian mentioned, you're welcome to um, add any questions that you might have in the chat. We will hopefully have time at the end to go back and look at any of those questions if, if they weren't answered throughout the presentation. So with that being said, first off, I just want everyone to really know what Major Clarity is. And Major Clarity is a platform that we um, have moved to for the, for the 2021 school year and hopefully going forward. And it is a, um, a powerful platform that allows the kids the opportunity to look at how what they take in high school and how they can determine career interest. And it feeds on into such things as post-secondary and on into careers. So it is whether or not the student is going to go to a, go straight into work after high school, go to a two-year schooling or a two-year degree, go to four years or even go on to grad school, it's a great opportunity for students to basically see um, how everything kind of ties together and relates. And I think once we get into it, that'll make a little bit more sense. So the biggest thing that we want to make sure is within our high schools, we have career development coordinators. We have one at every one of our high schools and they are our champions for major clarity. They are the individuals that lead the charge, answer questions or help any of our students if they have specific questions or, or, or um, need more help. Now, if you have a student at a middle school, these are the same individuals that they serve our feeder middle schools as well. So we do have their names and pictures up here, and I know the slide's gonna go away, and we will post these links in the chat. Um, this is our CTE website at the bottom, and you can go there, and we do have um, a link to all of our CDCs, and there's a video also from each CDC. So if you know that your child is, for example, at Marvin Ridge, but you're not sure where to find Miss Hall, you can click on her name on the on the on the website. And will actually, she actually says, introduces herself, and lets everyone know where her office is located. So all of that is there. If you if you do have further questions, or if your child is in a school and wants additional help, these are the individuals that are our champion for major clarity. So who has access for major clarity? Well, the way it is set up currently is any student within UCPS grades six through 12. They immediately have access right now to major clarity and how they access it is through their Clever account. So what Clever is, if you're not familiar with it, is a Clever is a single sign-on service. So it is a system that Union County uses the students can access multiple different things that are used throughout um, their time in school, and they only have to sign into Clever, and then it, it allows them to kind of transfer over into another platform. If your students are not sure about where to get Clever or what we mean by Clever, it's the same place they go to access a teacher's Canvas page, for example. They can go to their Clever, and instead of going to Canvas, they can search for Major Clarity and see it and click on it and it will take them in. So that's how they can get into their own personal instance of Major Clarity. It's directly through there. So what we plan to kind of walk through here in just a little bit is we are going to um, look at Major Clarity itself and we're gonna look at the student dashboard. So what is, the, what is it that the students see? For the purpose of today's presentation, I'm going to be the student and Ms. Hall is going to be the CDC and she's going to walk me through as I do the controls each part of major clarity so that you can see the power behind it and what we instruct and how we like our students to use major clarity. So we're going to talk about that student dashboard. We're going to talk about the personality assessment. That is probably the driving force and the most powerful part of major clarity. So we're going to talk about that. We're also gonna go into career exploration and how that personality assessment drives career exploration and what the students have as far as the ability to look at and learn from in the way of career exploration. We're gonna go on to the academy course planning tab and I will show you exactly what is involved with that and how students can use that to kind of plan out their courses um, throughout their middle and high school career. And then the very last part that we're going to talk about is um, Ms. Adcock is going to touch on the work-based learning tab and what's available to the students through the work-based learning part in Major Clarity. So that's kind of our, our, our plan to go through Major Clarity. So with that being said, I am going to go in here 
and I'm going to go over to the platform and I am already at the platform and I'm waiting on my portfolio. So, all right, Miss Hall. All right. Turn thanks. on and you get to walk me through it. All right. Thanks so much, Miss Hayward. Um, I am Lisa Hall, the CDC at Marvin, and I just want to take a second to really encourage all of you to really seek us as CDCs out at your local high schools. I think sometimes, I like to think we're the hidden gem. A lot of people don't know that a position like ours exists. Um, they don't know how to access us, but we are there. We are a function of the CTE department, but we're really there to help any student in the high school. I often say figure out what they want to be when they grow up. Um, we have a lot of students that, that are either, you know, think I just want to graduate high school and get in the workforce or they're so focused sometimes at my particular high school on getting into college and, and they've been focused on that for so long that they don't even really know what they want to do when they get to college. And they don't realize that a lot of the opportunities that we have opportunities in the CTE courses that they could be taken in high school that really correspond and correlate with some of the um, the skills and interests that, that might show up in major clarity. So make sure to come see us. I know I've personally been meeting with a lot of students over the past three weeks because registration for next year is in Fort Bloom. Know that just because the CTE course isn't taught at your local high school doesn't mean that we can't get them in. We have a very strong CTE Academy program here in Union County Public Schools too. So as we're touching on this, um, if there's a course or you see an interest for instance, aerospace engineering is one. A lot of my kids at my school want to be engineers. We don't teach that class at Marvin, but there's a way they can go to Sun Valley High School and participate in our aerospace engineering program. So know that that's what we're there for too. We can help your kids achieve a lot of their career goals. Going back to major clarity, my portfolio is the landing page. And what you love, what I love about this, and as you can see as parents, there is all there are all types of goals that we hope students will achieve when going through the portfolio. Um, if they have a blue check, as my student Kim here has, it means she has completed this part of the portfolio. So she's taken her personality assessment. She's actually gone in and explored some career paths. But you know what? She hasn't started her actual career plan. Or she needs to add some clubs and activities to her potential resume um, that she's building and to her um, career plan. So as parents, this is a good way in as students to sort of track the activities that have been done and activities that still need to be completed in major clarity. Down here at the bottom, you will see the career path test drive. I'm going to walk you through what a test drive looks like here in a second. Um, that's under our career exploration tab. The beauty about taking test drives is that it truly lets you see what a day in the life of a particular profession might be through videos or actual activities. The more test drives you take, the better major clarity gets at really honing in on a student's personal interest. Um, so please be, you know, don't just come to major clarity once. You need to engage over and over and over. Um, and what makes me happy is when I can pull as a CDC data and see that I've got a certain number of students that have accessed it, but I've also had several hundred that have gone back to major clarity after I've done an initial presentation. The algorithms in, in, in this process get much tighter and really hone in on your interests the more you test drive. Um, and then we'll talk about academic planning. Ms. Hayward will go over that in a little bit. Um, also in the bottom, as we go through career paths, you can star, you can favor career paths or certain occupations. Or if Ms. Adcock mentioned an internship in her speech here, you can always star those and have those saved on favorites. And I'll highlight that when we get to the career exploration tab as well. Um, if we move to the assessment page next, um, this is my personal favorite part as the CDC. As you can see, Ms. Hayward has taken her personality assessment here. Um, the personality assessment in major clarity is based on the Holland Code personality test. Some of you as parents might have taken the Holland Code test yourself, but basically how Holland Code works is that it groups people based on job categories, interest clusters, and work personalities that flourish in the work environment. 
So each of the six categories, there are six Holland codes. Each category that you see here on the screen really represents the six most common personalities that will be found in an average work for, or workplace. And it helps students um, identify and align with those personalities. If you click on like the letter I, so we'll go to realistic, which was the, this is a pretty evened out, I will say, uh, personality assessment. But if you wanted to know what does it mean to be realistic, you can click on the I and it talks about their doers. They have athletic ability, what they prefer to do. It talks, it gets into what careers are involved with people like that. So know that you could click on any of those traits and find out what that exactly means. I will say, Miss Hayward here, Miss Kim is my student, is pretty evenly based. You know, my own personal personality test, I joke, is much more skewed. I'm heavy in two categories, and I have zero when it comes to realistic, so that's not my cup of tea. So it's really interesting. I think students, when I do this in classes with them, are really interested to see where they rank in this. They're, they like to be involved. And the bulk of the students I work with, once they click on and learn about the different personality types, they tend to agree. They're like, this is pretty accurate. I agree with my assessment of this. Um, and questions, if you were to, the, the beauty too is you see reset assessment, you can take this as many times as you want. So she, if we wanted to reset it, we could. There are only, this takes probably five minutes to complete. I think it's 48 questions. Um, and a sample questions are like, do you like to make, would you like to manage the operations of a hotel? And there's three responses. Yes, no, and maybe. You would click that. Another one was lay brick or tile. And why I get 0% realistic is I click no on I am not a lay brick or tile. But I would be okay on managing the operations of a hotel. But the questions sort of range the gamut. They're really easy. And most students have fun. They don't even, I mean, they're like, well, this is cool. I like answering these questions. Um, we do also have a learning styles assessment on there. We aren't going to touch on that tonight for the sake of time. But this is also useful um, as a teacher. When I was in the classroom, I always administered a learning style assessment. But students might like to take it as well just to see are they auditory, tactile, or more visual learners? Sometimes that helps students figure out more about themselves and the ways that they better learn in the classroom. Um, after you've taken this initial assessment, we're going to move on to career exploration. What I love about this is based on your answers to that initial Holland Code test, you are going to get all types of potential career paths that fit with you. We're going to start up here. It goes from the most to the least. So we see veterinary sciences right here. That's the highest fit score. It's saying 99% we think a veterinary science path is going to fit with you. Obviously, it goes down. Biotech is 90%. Video production, 87 But if Ms. Hayward will keep scrolling down, what I like about major clarity is it doesn't just feature the top three. It goes down in order of fit score. There are all types of jobs here. Medical services was 76%. We get down here to logistics. When I taught marketing, I always said logisticians make a lot of money. It's a good career choice. 67%. It gets into military careers here. So as you see, it doesn't just give them one little pathway. It goes all the way down to the bottom. She might have a 10% fit score for something, but it still doesn't rule out those careers. It's saying right here, Ms. Hayward, banking is really not for you. It doesn't look like based on your test, but it doesn't mean you can't explore that. Um, but if we go back to the top, let's pick one of the top categories. Um, we'll go into veterinary sciences since that was the best fit score. When you click in the tab, like she's doing for veterinary sciences, just we'll go into that category. In slow. There we go. There we go. All right. It breaks down what is veterinary sciences? What do you do? We're going to come back up here to the top in a second. But what I love, I want to go down first. We'll come back to the learning. Are the occupations. So at the very bottom of the page, you're going to see that there's 11 different occupations that can be found just within the veterinary science pathway. So it's not just being a veterinarian. There's other jobs within that. 
What I love is how the education levels up here correspond with those occupations. So as you can see, some of these professions are going to require up to a doctoral or professional degree, obviously, if you're going to be a veterinarian. But Ms. Hayward, let's click off doctoral. Let's say, I don't think I'm, I'm, I don't know that I'm willing to work that hard. What can I do with just a bachelor's degree? It's going to limit it down to nine. But now let me pull off bachelor's. Let me say, is there anything I can do with just an associate's degree? I just want to go to the community college right after. It's still going to, to, to narrow it down. And so let's click on vet tech right now down here at the bottom, Ms. Hayward. So say I found out I can be a vet tech if I go to my local community college. Then you click on the specific career and you're taken to this page, which as you see, it talks about you just have to have an associate's degree. It tells about the average income for someone who works as a vet tech, which, by the way, you can get your vet tech certification in high school through UCPS courses. So, um, but, but it, and it talks about what's the job growth. There is expected to be rapid growth in this area, but sadly, if you want to stay in our local geographic area, there's not a ton of vet tech jobs. You might have to move somewhere else. But we could change that zip code to anywhere that a student thinks they want to relocate to afterwards. As you keep scrolling down, it goes over what are common tasks that a vet tech might have to do. It gets into specifics of the job. And if we go all the way down, I think it gets into the type of the work style. So a person who wants to work is this. What's a good work style? What are the personality traits that are great for this? So it really, um, if we go back out of this, any, any pathway that you pick, had we picked biotech, it would have done the same thing. But you can play with the education levels. And if we were to pull it all out and go just a high school diploma, there might still be jobs that are still left there if we just had a high school diploma. Um, the top two things, though, here are what I want to focus on now. This is when we talk about taking a career test drive. This is what Major Clarity does so well. And I'm going to show you how the more interactive students get with the test drive, the better the results are going to be in the end. There's always two ways you can test drive a career path, learning from a professional or trying an activity. So we're going to first click on the watch an interview, which is the learn from a professional tab. Nearly any job I can think of, um, and we'll go back to even just searching regular jobs, has a correlating professional video that goes with it. At the top of the page, it will tell you a little bit about the person who's being interviewed, what her background is, and what she does. The entire video usually is around five to six minutes, which is not a huge time commitment for a student. But say you didn't want to watch this one. So we've checked here. If we just want to go to what is the unique work and what are the most important skills and abilities? So if you want to click on that, you could just watch that section. Or you could just go to what are the, um, yeah, if we clicked on that right there, what are the most important skills? It'll go first and in your play. And you see that's only 45 seconds. So she might talk about what are the skills. I don't know if we want to play that now, but or you can watch the whole video. After you watch this video or snippet, you're going to click on this important, important key called score your fit. This is where the algorithms behind the formulas really come into play. After I watch this video, I'm going to say, oh gosh, that is not what I thought it was going to be at all. I'm scoring that is bad. That is not what I want to do. Or, oh my gosh, that's great, or somewhere in between. But if we rated that bad, and then go back to the career exploration page real quick, Miss. Well, we'll come back. You'll see that our, our, our categories are going to have shifted. My favorite one, and I love this activity probably the best out of any I've test driven, is that the day in the life. So let's start the activity. And any any career, be it accountant or video producer, is going to have these activities where it shows you. What are some tasks that someone might do? What's a day in the life of this profession going to be like? So if we let's start here on the veterinarian, this one here gives you a case study, and we're going to start with Lucy the cat here. So Lucy the cat's coming in. She's not eating. She's constantly licking her lips, and she has vomited three times last night. And it's going to ask students, what should we first do? And, and, and Ms. Kim said, oh, we're going to try a blood test. And they'll be like, no. That's not the best option. And it tells you why. We're going to take an x-ray so that we can diagnose. So then if we continue to the next step, 
We're going to find out that that x-ray showed that Lucy had eaten a toy. We can see a toy in her belly. So what is the best option there? Obviously surgery, because we're going to need to take the toy out of Lucy's belly. But this continues on and on, and it gives people really a feel for what it might be like to work in veterinary sciences. So scoring your fit. For me there, I loved it. I like talking about Lucy, or I'll just do good. I thought it was pretty good. That was more interesting than the video. So we're going to submit. And so after we've taken that test drive, if we go back to that career exploration page, let's see, oops, look what's not 99% is the best fit anymore. It, veterinary sciences has moved down because I rated that video as bad. That's not what I thought it was. Now biotech has moved up to the top. And, and, and the process, our hopes would be that you would continue to go through all these different pathways, play, do as many test drives as you could because the more feedback major clarity gets from the students again the better the formulas work at really narrowing down the pathways for the students one last thing i want to show at the very top of the page um, this can also be interactive without the personality test it works a lot better with the personality test but say i just wanted to go up here and i don't want to do any of this i thought i wanted to be an accountant so I'm just going to search for accounting up here in the majors, and we're going to see accountants right here. That's going to take you again to that straight pathway. Obviously, my personality test that I took is saying that's only a 13% fit, but we could click on this pathway and go through that same process and test drive that career with the video or the activity. Another thing I like, if we cleared that out, is what if I don't even begin to know, I'm not sure about the personality test, I'll go over here to strengths, and I'm gonna click on, I'm really good at math or English. For me, I, I say, I, you know, I, I'm math. So what are careers that you need to be really good at math at? Um, and, and you can pull it up that way. Um, and so the, the, there's just a lot of different ways to search. And the final thing I wanted to show is, Say I went back here and I looked at video production and I decided I really like that and I did that. Do you see how biotech has that gold star? Ms. Hayward's going to show you how to turn this star. So we're going to star that. When you click on that star and it turns to gold, it means you have favorited. Or, you know, I like that pathway. Out of all I did, I think I want to save that. Then if we go back to the very first screen, the My Portfolio, and scroll down to the bottom, you never lose what you've done. So you'll see we've got biotech and video production as the two career paths that we've test dri driven and that we've really liked so far. So it is it's a progressive, and they don't have to click sit, save or anything. Once you've taken the personality test, it's always there. Once you've clicked the star, it's always gonna be here. So. Um, there's so much I could play in this all day. I have a daughter who's in high school myself, and I, I find that the students I work with and my own kids actually like doing this. They don't look at this as a chore. I think it's, you know, you as parents, it's, it's maybe getting them engaged and helping students find it the first time, but once they realize it's out here, it's a lot of fun. So that's the career pass and the assessments in a nutshell. I'll turn it back to you, Ms. Hayward. Thank you. Um, so what I'm going to talk about now just briefly is a few of two other of the tabs for purposes of time tonight we are not going to cover all of the tabs so um, student journal resumes a lot of that is self-explanatory so we are not going to go into a lot of detail in regards to those but the next thing that we're going to pick up is on the academic planning and what I want to show you in regards to the academic planning is this is a wonderful planning tool for the students to use this in no means replaces registration. It's not tied to registration. It is not a registration file. It is instead just a place where the students can go out, play around, and plan for courses that they may want to possibly take next year or even years into the future. So the wonderful thing about Major Clarity, as, as Ms. Hall mentioned, is you know it saves these fit scores and it saves these pathways based off of your personality um, it also can use that to drive um, assistance with planning out your classes. For example, when I go to academic planning, it automatically carried over the pathway for 
the um, agriculture and natural uh, resources because that's the veterinary science part. It had already pulled up this particular pathway. So when I look at this, it gives me a couple of options. First off, there is a video here, and this is a link directly to our UCPS CTE website with a video about our own programs for animal science. So that is right here that I could click on if I wanted to go to our website and watch a video about the, about the courses for within that pathway. I can also change pathways. If I don't think I want to do that and I want to look at other pathways, I can come up here and I can change pathways. And when I do so, it will ask me, is there a certain high school? And the reason this is important is because when we start looking at early college, things like that, it can be a little bit you know, more specific. But if you're not sure and you want to see all of the courses that are available, you can hit not sure and it's going to show you all of the pathways. So for the purpose of this, I'm going to go back to my animal science pathway and go back to where we were so that everything is, is exactly how it is. Now, what I can do is go in here and start planning out some courses that I may want to take. So I'm assuming in this situation, because it's not built yet, that you know you would build according to where you are. So I'm going to go over to ninth grade and just kind of go in here and, and start planning. So if I choose the plus for the math section, it's going to come up with what are my options that I can take as a ninth grader for math. So I'm going to go ahead and say, well, I'm planning on doing NC Math 2. And I'm going to put that. And you'll notice it came over. And it just says planned. Again, these are just a planning tool. But the beauty about major clarity is when I get down here to the pathway electives, it's going to already tell me what are those courses that line up with my interests. We all know if we take classes we have an interest in, that we enjoy, that we're going to do better in. So it's going to go out here and I'm going to be able to pick, okay, well, as a ninth grader, I'm in the animal science pathway. My options are I could take animal science one or I could take intro to ag. So I'm going to go ahead and say, well, I want to take animal science one. So it puts it in here. Just so you can kind of see how that builds, 10th grade, I want to go out and plan for my 10th grade. I can come out here for 10th grade, and now I have more options because there's more available in the 10th grade level. So I'm going to, I know I'm going to go on and I'm going to move to animal science to small animal. I'm going to put that down as a possibility. So it allows you to plot out and to plan all of your classes. And, you know, you can use the arrows to scroll over to grade 12 and continue and plan them all throughout. Now, if you're not sure of your pathway, you can. We do have a general pathway under here that you can switch to and you can do the general pathway and that will open up everything at once. But this is nice because it kind of steers you into a direction that I know I really like doing this. What would be classes that relate to that? The other thing that's at the bottom here that I want to point out is this graduation tracker. Now keep in mind again, and I can't emphasize this enough, it's a planning tool. This is not the end all be all, and we don't want individuals to think that if they fill this up, that means they've got everything. That may not necessarily be the case because there may be certain criteria, certain specifics, and the guidance counselors are the experts when it comes to that. This is just meant for planning, so you can see you know, oh, okay, I have to have four maths. Well, you may have four maths, but they may not be the right four maths that count towards graduation. So just be very careful of doing that. This is the purpose of just for planning. Um, so you can see it's all down here at the bottom. So when you go out here and build this, the nice thing about this is this becomes part of what we call your career plan. And when you build this out, you do have the option to print it. And to do that, it would be down here when we get to my career plan. But before I get to that, I want to touch on post-secondary exploration also. So the post-secondary exploration is exactly that. It is an exploration process for post-secondary ed. So hey, what Kim, I mean by that, yeah. Before you, before you get into that, I did have one question that came in related to your the course builder. Okay. The Planner, uh, they want the question is it's a good question. Um, are there South Piedmont Community College courses in the academic planning section? To my knowledge, they are not built there yet. There are some that we're still working on building out. 
Um, and I've been working with Major Clarity to get them all built out. So I don't know if the CCP classes are in there or not. Um, that is something I'll have to look into to see if they are built or not. Um, let's see if I go out here and choose 12th grade. Um, I don't I don't see any in this particular path, but I'll have to do some more checking and we can follow up on that. Um, so the post-secondary exploration is meant just for exploration. So it's a place where the students can go and say, if they know that they came out high in the you know animal science area and they definitely want to look at pursuing something in the animal science, they can use this as an opportunity to go out there and see what colleges may have that as, an, as something that I can look at and I can get a little bit more information. So I can come under programs, for example, and I know that it falls under the ag program. And for the purpose of this, I know that I'm going to look at North Carolina because I know that I want to look at in-state schools. So I'm going to choose North Carolina. So when doing that, I now have all of the colleges that actually come up with a program in this particular area. I can go in here and I can choose a, a college. I'm just going to select North Carolina State. And from here, it's just going to give me a very basic overview. Again, this is just for exploration. So it does have a link to their website if I want to link onto their website. But it does tell me, for example, 9% of the um, students evidently are under the that particular field that I was looking at. So I can see where that field falls in relation to their other programs. I can look at their admissions and graduation information. And then I can calm down and I can look at the cost. So it's just a basic overview. Um, when the students get to be juniors and um, they'll start working with their guidance counselor and they use a program called SCORE, which is much different when they get ready to apply for college and things like that. This again is just meant to be exploration, to tie it in with the students and the careers so that they can kind of see what schools may have that particular program that they are looking at. Um, and, and can kind of go from there. So I don't have to just look if I want to drop this down and I don't want to look at, at North Carolina schools, I want to look at all schools. Then I have the opportunity to look at any school in that particular area that still has that program. I can also use this see more filters. So if I open this up, it gives me even more things I can search for. Again, if I'm just exploring the colleges and I want to have just a little bit more information. I can do it that way. If I want to look for a specific college, I can just type the name and it will take me there. So all of this is just part of the of the exploration that ties into it. Again, you have the star where you can star it so it will go on to the portfolio. The very last thing I want to show you before we move on to the work-based learning is the My Career Plan. As I mentioned, when you do your academic planning, you know, one way you can print it out or use it is you can go to My Career Plan. And My Career Plan is a great way of going to, and you can enter, you know, what is your career goals, education goals, anything that you want to add in here and save it. And when you do so, it will allow you, if you hit View Career Plan, it will take everything that you've done in major clarity, and it will put it in this nice little printout that will have, you know, what, how many you did your assessment, where did you come out, what was the pathway you liked, what would be some of the goals you have set, and then here's the plan of study based off of how we planned it out. And again, just a plan, it's just for reference purposes. Here would be a listing of any careers or any colleges, anything along those lines. So this is a nice part of it that allows you to print it if, if in fact you want to do that. But again, it's just more for, planning purposes and for the student to use it as um, a tool to help them within the whole process. So that's the part that I have. Now we're going to go into work-based learning and I'm going to turn this part over to Karen who's going to instruct me on where to go. All right. So I'm Karen Adcock. I'm one of the work-based learning coordinators for Union County Public Schools. Um, you'll notice the tab says work-based learning. What's basically happening, let's say your student has come in, they've done the personality assessment, their learning styles, they've built their plan, and then they take a couple of those courses that Kim said, for instance, Animal Science 1, Animal Science 2, and they're still interested in that career. The next step 
what I think is an amazing opportunity for our students is an internship. What that does is yet again, it's one last thing is they're in their senior year of high school and it's something to get them hands-on experience. They can observe, they really get in to see what the career is about. Um, one of two things typically happens in an internship that I see my students in. I love the first one. It's when the student goes in, they know they wanna be this in this career field and they love it. It just like, solidifies everything about that. That's amazing. I will say there are a couple of times when a student gets in it and they realize it's really not for them. What better time to decide that than your senior year versus when you've done a four year degree and then try to figure that out. So I think it's a great opportunity for our students. Um, notice as Kim can scroll down, it says like the different types. We just did like a chunk. So we did like business and marketing as a career, IT, there's a general, which means if you don't see one of the careers listed, please do not think that you cannot apply. I am not above cold calling companies, like getting new partners, that's part of my job. So if it's a career that you don't see on here, go to general, fill out what you're interested in, and that's when I would take over at that point. Um, we did give some descriptions beside each one. It tells you, you know, summary of what the internship typically looks like. It also gives you some examples of companies that we have actually placed interns with in the past, and we hope to still work with in the future. Once again, if you don't see a company on there that you're interested in, it does not mean you can't apply. Please still apply, tell me what career you wanna go into, and I am more than happy to discuss that with you. Um, but like I said, I just feel like it's a great summary to your senior year to see you know, hands-on. Um, these companies, they have been amazing to work with. Students come out learning a lot of information. Um, a lot of them are, like I said, hands-on. They're in there, they're doing things, they're letting them you know, practice for vet. I have some that have taken blood from animals and they've given vaccines and they've done all those things. Um, so I just think it's a great opportunity in that area. All right, thank you, Karen. So that is basically the parts of major clarity that we really wanted to point out to you. Um, one of the things that I wanna make sure is that, you know, your students have access through Clever. Major clarity does not have per se parent accounts. So the easiest way for you would be to sit with your student and have your student log on and take a look and do it together. I think it's a great conversational item to be able to do with them also. We will be doing it within the schools. Um, our teachers are doing it that type of thing, but it doesn't hurt. I mean, the more, like, like we said, the more you do it, the better the algorithm gets. Um, but for the purpose of tonight, what I have, and I'm gonna go ahead and go back to my slideshow here. We have a demo link that we will put also in the chat, but you may wanna jot this down. But this is a demo that you can actually go in and play around in. Um, I want you to understand though that this is a very general demo. This was given to us by Major Clarity. So this is not a demo that was built out for Union County Public Schools, meaning that when you go into that academic course plan, it's not gonna be Union County specific courses, but it's still a great tool for you to go in and you can try the assessment yourself. You can play around with it. It walks you through it. You're not going to hurt anything. It's a great way to see where everything is and to learn where it is, is within this parent demo. Um, and again, I don't know if um, one of my fellow co-hosts, if they might be able to take that and put that in the chat, that link, that would be great. I um, did, Kim. It's in awesome. There. Thank you so much for doing You're it. Welcome. So that would be the best place to go and play around in it. And then again, also sitting with your student and having your student, um, work through it so that you can see their results also. So at this time, that's kind of how all that we had, but I want to give a chance to see if there are any questions that we need to answer or anything. So Mr. Davis, if you have access to the questions. I do, I do. And uh, I do have a few in here that I've been kind of sitting on and I and, uh, wanted to make sure everybody got it. So the first question I have, this goes to Ms. Adcock. So what is the age requirement for internships? Okay, so what we do is it has to be a rising senior. What that means is we do offer summer internships as well. So they can do it this summer prior to their senior year, or they can do a full semester internship first or second semester of their senior year. Can I add one thing on to that though? You do have to take a first and second level CTE course 
to qualify for the internship. So it's something I feel like as a CDC, I try to coach our students along so that they're prepared to go to Miss Adcock their senior year. Yeah, that's that's a that's a great great point, um, Miss Hall. We do have a couple more in there. So another person put in there, the, uh, has the software platform been reviewed with students? My son is a junior in high school. Um, so this, uh, and I believe Cuthbertson High School is what they put. So, you know, I'm gonna, again, I'll let you or Lisa kind of answer that, how we've been working that in the schools with the CDCs. Yeah, so because this is our first year and it's kind of an unusual year with the pandemic and with our limited, you know, the limited number of um, in-person days for our classes and things like that, um, we have tried to do this as a soft rollout to our kids because we all know that we just don't want to put even more out there. And, and so it has been a soft rollout to our, 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 um, through our CTE classes. So we have asked our teachers to work through it if they are enrolled in a CTE class to be able to introduce the students to it and to go out to it. And then our CDCs um, have also gone into several classes. And Lisa, since I know with you being a CDC, if you want to kind of talk about how you've done it. Yes, so I've been fortunate enough. Um, it's really the accessibility to the students we want to get out of CDCs. It's been a little difficult for any teachers to sort of figure out how to incorporate us sometimes with um, the this, this schedule. But I have personally been a guest speaker in multiple classes at our school. And really what I just walked you all through as parents, that little let's do this, let's do that. I had more time um, with students, but I'll give them a little bit of time to take the assessment. And then we'll get that initial personality assessment and I show them how to use it. What I'm seeing at my school is I might have several hundred that, activ that I've activated, but I've only probably had half of those students go back and re-engage after I've done that class presentation. So we are trying as hard as we can and, and we reach out. This is not just a CTE um, software as i said we want to reach every student so i have made all students uh, all teachers aware whether they're a cte or core teacher that we are willing to come in um, there's also a lot of great lesson plans that major clarity pre-populates um, like especially around certain specific careers like if january was health science month they had something there um, but there's, but there's also, if you're a history teacher, here's a lesson plan that you can use as a history teacher to incorporate to your classes. So we are trying, I just think, as, as Ms. Hayward said, teachers have had a lot on them this year and they're doing the best that they can to incorporate this. I do anticipate next year, when hopefully we're back five days as CDCs, we love to get in classes live with students and do these type of things face to face. And I do think we'll have um, even more participation um, once we're able to do that. Hey, and Ms. Adcock, there is a question in there related to internships and, and the courses and, and the two pathways. Would you be willing to put your email address in there so that they can directly email you with some of those specific questions related to students? I'll be glad to, I'll do that right now. Thank you. Um, Let's see. I'm looking to see if there's any more. I believe there was one more that I thought. Uh, here's a question. How do you know what foundational classes are required in the course planner and, and how many credits? Let's see. I'm sorry. It just jumped on me. And how many credits you have available for electives? So that's why this is just meant to be a planner. You would still need to work within your registration and along the lines of with the program of studies that you have access to to determine what's going to be the best class that you have to take for your math and to kind of go from there that may not be something where you can sit down today as say an eighth grader and plan out five years because you know it, it just may not be possible the other nice thing is it you know it will pre-fill so we hope that when you're a junior that your ninth tenth and eleventh your ninth and 10th classes are already there. But again, this is only meant to be a planner. So what I would do if I were you is I would do this after you possibly register um, and look at what did you sign up for or use it as a guide to help you when you're registering. 
So you know that after looking at this, that animal science is, a, is a, something that's available from looking at this, then I want to make sure when I get ready to do my registration, I'm going to pick animal science as a class that I have an interest in. So, you know, again, it's going to have to be a, a something that's done in conjunction. I would not work too terribly far ahead because the more farther ahead you get, sometimes things change and, you know, and again, it's just a plan. You can change it at any time. You can go out twice a year, three times a year, change it, add to it, change, you know, it's not set in stone that once you do it, this is what you have and you can't change it. It's, it's a, you know, a living, breathing portfolio that you can alter at any time. All right. Uh... Hey, listen, I was going to say, I had a question asked to me privately that I think might be beneficial to clarify. I had a parent just ask if they can retake that first. So say they take the personality assessment in the eighth grade. They might not be the same person in the 11th grade. And yes, that is the beauty of major clarity. You can take that as many times as you want. And obvious, well, I tell people I came in to teach it. I'm lateral entry. I changed my mind at age 42 as to what I wanted to do. You're constantly changing and evolving. So obviously that's, that's the beauty of it. And it will save that progress, but you can go in and reset that. If you want to take it as a parent, if you want to play on your kid's account and take it and see if it works for you, you could do that and then reset it and your, your student could take it again. So you can play with it as much as you want. And one question that has come up in here several times is how do I get to it? So I know we started out and some people came in late. So again, the, the easiest way to tell you is have your son or daughter go into it to their, how they get into their canvas pages and things like that. They go to the clever single sign on, click on that and major clarity will be an option for them to get into it. It's very, very simple to do that. And you can get in and have them play with it. Even if they haven't been exposed to it at their school yet, they already have access to it. So have them go in and log in and play around with it. They can't hurt it. One thing that I also want to mention that's really nice about Major Clarity, and I'm not sure I had a phone call there I was dealing with as well, but this carries with them past graduation. So when students graduate, anything they put in there, they can put a personal email address and take that with them. Any things they build toward resumes, anything that they put in there as far as uh, test scores or anything they're trying to keep records on, any accomplishments, all that goes with them. So I want you to just realize that as they put this in, this is something that they will have for the rest of their lives as a beneficial tool for them to use and get to. So I hope that helps you see that why we think this is such a val valuable tool for our students. Um, I know it's getting close to seven o'clock. Um, Brian, and, can I share yes. one more thing real quick? Sure. I just want to point out, I pulled my screen back up. And for those of you that do get into major clarity, if you're, if you're in with your kids and you get stuck or you're not sure where to go or you're trying to find something, Major Clarity has this wonderful chat bubble in the bottom corner that is a help bubble. And I can tell you after doing being on lots of websites and chatting with people when I need assistance, this is so far above and beyond anything you've ever, I mean, it's amazing. But if you get stumped, you can click on this and basically fill out your information. And then you're instantly within 30 seconds, you're talking with the customer service person at Major Clarity who will answer your questions help you get to where you need to go or help in any way. So this is for our students, our teachers, our CDCs use it. This chat bubble is like amazing. So I just want to make sure that people know that it is there so that if you do, have, if you get into it and you're like, where did she go to do that? Right here is the best thing to do in the world. So. All right. Uh, Anything else? All right. right? No, I'm sorry. Uh, I shared yeah. I'm sorry, I shared a link really fast. I like this video. I've used it several times. It's on, well, a Canvas video that was stored, um, but it tell, it walks you through how a student exactly step-by-step -step will walk um, will log into Major Clarity. So I did share that link. So if you want to watch, it's like a minute long and it shows you a visual, if that helps. Oh, thanks. So that's, that's very helpful, Karen. I appreciate you putting that in the chat. So again, I want to thank all of you for giving up a little bit of time in your evening. And, and I really hope if, you're, if your son or daughter has not been on this platform, get them on it. And, and I think it, you'll find that it can be very useful. It's fun to play with it. I have a middle school student myself. I've had him on it, playing with it, looking at his interest. And Ms. Hall is exactly right. His, when he did his assessments, it picked out what he was just to a T. 
So um, I really think that it will be something that I think your students uh, will enjoy and really find some use for as they go in to begin planning what they want to do. So with that being said, we're going to close the session. Again, this is going to be recorded and we will have it posted in the near future once we get time to take get the video edited and, and post it out. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out to the CDC at your school. Um, and if you can't, if you can't get up with them, uh, please reach out to either Kim Hayward or Karen or I, and we'd be more than happy to try to answer the questions for you. So again, thank you for your time. Appreciate your support of CTE and, and we sure appreciate you allowing us to share some of the great things we have going on with major clarity. Have a great evening.